They bring color and class to the catwalk, introducing new styles and trends. Grand Couturier Stefan Roland, the dazzling Kevin Hall, the exciting Blue Marine, the storytelling Frank Sorbier, and George Chakra creating couture red carpet ready looks. French fashion designer Stéphane Roland's bold creations have made him a favorite in the industry and one of the newest members of the elite club of Grand Couturiers. Having been in the fashion industry for over 20 years, Roland made his name as the head designer at Jean-Louis Chira, a French label favored by socialites and grand dames. However, in 2007, he successfully launched his own couture house. Raised in many destinations around the world, Roland eventually went to Paris and studied fashion at the Chambre Syndicale de la Couture Parisienne. As a promising up-and-coming young designer, Roland was discovered by Balenciaga and was employed to help with menswear, eventually being promoted to creative director. His stay at Balenciaga was short-lived as he left to begin work on his own ready-to-wear collection. This was an instant success and saw his clothing sold in stores all around the world. Roland also spent some of his time working as a costume designer for cinema and theater, but decided to try his hand at Haute Couture and joined the team at the French house of Jean-Louis Chira, becoming the head designer. He turned Jean-Louis Chira into a modern-day, up-to-date fashion house, sometimes showing controversial Haute Couture catwalk shows and often unveiling shows that are full of sumptuous fabrics and luxurious prints. For the 2006 ready-to-wear collection, he mixed different periods and new fabrics together to reflect a woman who is both casual and sophisticated. Daywear included pencil skirts and skirts that followed the trend of pleats kicking out just above the knee. Sleek trousers came worn with metallic jackets and fur coats came in leopard or tiger print. For evening wear, kimono styles were the order of the season of Jean-Louis Chira fans. And when it comes to fans, Roland and Jean-Louis Chira have many, including Hollywood's leading ladies. Actresses Ellen Page and Anne Hathaway have both graced the red carpet wearing vintage designs that looked absolutely stunning. Jean-Louis Chira was the home for Roland for several years before he branched out on his own in 2007, when as one of the invited designers to the Haute Couture show in Paris, showed his first solo collection featuring monochrome black and ivory in flowing silk fabrics. He revealed his second Haute Couture collection from his own label at the Hotel Western in Paris, where influences came from the Baghdad-born architect Zahar Hadid's work. Other influences of Roland's included Picasso's famous three women, cubism, and straight photography by Edward Weston. Black, gray, and white with touches of pale peach dominated the color palette, while zippers replaced buttons and clasps. Layering was also an important aspect of the show, as evening gown lengths varied from mini to floor length. And even the bride carried a bouquet of structured metal flowers as the final passage of the show. To mark his third independent collection, he opened the Haute Couture autumn winter season with a sumptuous collection, borrowing heavily from expressionist, abstract and modern artists to produce a predominantly monochrome collection. He played with the cut and length of the clothes, which differed radically from each outfit. Early 2009, Roland joined the Couture Club, sending out an imaginative collection of cocktail dresses and evening gowns that played on bold beadwork and unexpected elements like bustles and capes. This was Roland's first show after being admitted to the select group of Haute Couture labels, whereas previously his label was as an invited member, not an official one. It's my first season as a Grand Couturier, uh, which means for me and my team a lot. And secondly, um, the last collection in 2008 was very successful. So I hope uh, and I wish uh, to my to my my family uh, a beautiful success for 2009. Having stepped out of the Jean-Louis Chira idiom, Roland is producing fresh and contemporary collections with bold, luxurious, and extravagant creations that have made him a major contender in haute couture.
Detroit-born designer Kevin Hall, using his choice of fabrics, material, and bold, bright colors, has created some of the most beautiful gowns and outfits around. Hall knew as a child that he wanted to be a fashion designer, so he studied fashion at Cass Technical High School and won the Designer of Tomorrow Scholarship, which is sponsored by the Los Angeles-based Fashion Institute of Design and Merchandising. In the early 80s, he launched Kevin Hall Couture and within years had become one of California's top designers, with his affordable collections selling in retailers such as Bergdorf Goodman and Neiman Marcus. Hall's achievements include Life & Style Magazine's Style Maker of the Year, the 47th Annual Gold Coast Fashion Awards Designer of the Year, and NAACP's Great American Designer. He took on the role as Design and Creative Director of the New York fashion house Halston for a couple of years, creating dazzling evening wear that would be worn by some of the most recognizable celebrities. By 2002, he established his own Kevin Hall collection that focused on style, beautiful craftsmanship, and smooth draping forms. His drop-dead gorgeous gowns are now constantly seen on the red carpet, and Hollywood is definitely a vital and lucrative showcase for top designers such as him. Some of the most recognizable women who have worn Kevin Hall on the red carpet are Vanessa Williams, who for two years running wore his gowns. One was a feather gown in minty sage, and she shone in a splashy white and black one-shouldered print dress. Actresses Katherine Heigl and Kim Raver both looked gorgeous at the 2007 Screen Actors Guild Awards, and wife of actor and California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, Maria Shriver, has appeared in a long black and white dress, which was selected and designed for her by the Los Angeles-based designer. He kicked off Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week in 2005 and 2006 to showcase his 2006 spring and fall collections. His Atlantis-themed spring collection featured crisp linen, chiffon, satin and silk, and the beaded applique that dominated the line gave it a retro feel that harks back to the days of old Hollywood glamour. The fall collection was inspired by the 1975 film Mahogany. The contemporary mahogany is timeless yet modern in granite and autumn tweeds with gold sequins and beads. And rather than taking a peek into Hall's casual collection for fall 2006, he portrayed something much more glamorous. He closed LA Fashion Week with his usual sophisticated signature and known for his touch of glamour and luxury, called his spring 2007 collection Dusk to Dawn. Models slowly came out one by one gliding down the runway, light as clouds in rich, luxurious fabrics such as metallic silk cottons and chiffon gowns, while Oscar nominee Virginia Madsen was there front row to support one of her favorite award season designers. Floaty and feminine creations defined his urban jet set collection of fall 2007, which included pleated taffeta dance dresses, tulle baby dolls, and flirty chiffon gowns in an assortment of rich mineral colors such as ruby, malachite, anthracite, alabaster, amethyst, and amber. In a bid to motivate and inspire others to support African-related charities, the award-winning fashion designer used safari as the theme for his spring 2008 collection. Fabrics took center stage in the use of mud cloth, painted twill, printed chiffons, and crushed organza, while his signature flowing dresses came in cheetah, black, and multicolored prints. Hall borrowed from the golden age of movie stars with his spring 2009 line, appropriately called Stage Door, with the color palette being reminiscent of pre-Technicolor cinema, with shades ranging from sage to silver, while the fabric ranged from taffeta to chiffon. Hall's signature look has remained the same over the years, but he has an eye for detail and use of color, which has created some of the most elegant, beautiful, and modern designs that are just simply eye-catching. Known for its modern and edgy romantic look, Blue Marine, with its bold designs, has become one of the favorite fashion houses to come out of Italy. Anna Molinari and her husband Gianpolo Tarabini are the brains behind the fashion house and set up the Blue Marine Fashion Company in 1977 in Capri, Italy, making their debut at Milan Fashion Week in 1981. 
The name was inspired by their favorite color and their love of the sea, which is evident in many of their designs. Blue Marine creates not only flowing dresses and colorful outfits, but also lingerie, swimwear and accessories. Their intimate apparel collections are brightened by shiny and jeweled swimwear, with bikinis and pareos in striking fuchsia or plain black and white colors. Silk satin has been the predominant element of Blue Marine's underwear collections, with printed tulle and alluring macrame lace insets, giving the garments a luxurious lightness. They have used their intimate apparel and swimsuits to open Milan Fashion Week, with Hawaiian fantasies being favored, and tops featuring tropical images and swimsuits covered with crystals and chains. In 1995, the Anna Molinari brand was launched and designed by Anna's daughter, Rosella Tarabini. In 2006, she sent out models in elegant wrap coats and girly dresses with her Diffusion Blue Marine collection. The show predominantly featured belted waist-length coats and long coats abundantly lined with fur. For the evening, the designer proposed daring gold lame numbers with above-knee-high suede boots. Having some collections that have focused mainly on black, the Blue Marine label decided to release a collection with bright fluorescent colors. Slip dresses and vests with lace trims and brightly colored shorts were worn with tailored jackets in a collection that focused on realistic practicality. Designer Anna Molinari, nicknamed the Queen of the Roses due to her love of the flower that has become one of the images of the Blue Marine label, has taken the fashion world by storm over the last two decades. With a mixture of sensations and cultural influences, she has created fashion for sexy, feminine and playful modern women, using pastel colors for day wear and her long evening dresses, while shorter evening wear has come in deep shades of emerald and grass green. In the mid-1990s, Molinari added a new line to Blue Marine called Blue Girl, a collection for girls and young women. Focusing on simple yet classic looks, the label has wowed fans with their different inspirations and catwalk models. Wonderbra pin-up Eva Herzegova tantalized the audiences at an early 2002 show with a low-back evening gown in sea spray green and blue. 2005 saw a ballerina-inspired collection for Blue Girl with sugary pink tutu-style skirts, scooped necklines, flowers and ribbons all starring on the catwalk, ready to remind girls of all ages of dreams of joining the ballet. For the sassier Blue Girl fashionista though, the collection also included a cowgirl look, complete with fringed belts, skimpy suede outfits and of course cowboy boots and hat. For Blue Girl's winter women's wear, the design is presented against a snow-covered landscape with an ice-rimmed catwalk to set off her warm wool and fur fashions. Designs featured high-necked cream wool dresses with cut-off capes in pale furs, bloom-shaped silk skirts nestled snugly under fur-cropped jackets, and heels were icicle-thin and high in black, white and gold. Fur hats also made an appearance in this winter wonderland. Blue Marine was once described as a label which caters for that brand of Italian miss for whom no dress is too small nor any diamond too big. But for Molinari, who has received many awards throughout her career for her striking designs, her collections are aimed at a modern, sophisticated woman. With his bold, theatrical fashion shows, French designer Franck Sorbier has become one of the elite in the haute couture scene. He was noticed after presenting his first collection in 1987, and with his passion for sewing, textiles and colour, has since put theatrics back into haute couture with his fantastic exhibitions and creative designs. By the mid-1990s, he was given the opportunity to show his winter collection at the Carousel du Louvre by jewellery and watch manufacturer Cartier, and also become a member of the French Federation of Couture and Ready to Wear, which is in charge of choosing dates and locations for the French Fashion Weeks. It was around this time that he also showed his first couture collections. 
His 2004-2005 Autumn Winter Haute Couture collection in Paris reflected grace and elegance, where femininity appeared in his jackets, waistcoats, trousers, skirts and coats. As one of Paris's new top haute couture designers, he dedicated his 2005 spring-summer haute couture collection to African jazz musician Manu Dibango. He made full use of his ornamental style and broke away from the idea of the traditional runway with models dancing around parked cars and to the theme of an eclectic African jazz underscore, creating a party atmosphere and showing off new styles of clothing. The collection demonstrated Sorbier's flair for femininity and his rich imagination by incorporating needlework, patchwork, prints and embroidery and vivid colour set against black and white. In 2006, he presented a show inspired by plants and flowers that featured elegant dresses adorned with fake flowers, layered with frond-like fringing or in leaf print graphics. Colours were evocative of nature too, with browns and greens on some outfits, bright reds on others. His inspirations are boundless, dazzling guests with burlesque-inspired themes at well-known circus venues in Paris, where models emerged beneath the big top in heavily structured dresses nipped at the waist, and looser long-flowing gowns in decadent velvets and lace with exquisite beading. It's almost normal to expect something out of the ordinary from Sorbier, like a ballerina in a tutu on roller skates rolling down a runway at ground level, indicating a lost childhood, a childhood past and all the memories and fantasies that escaped with it, or seeing models up in boxes posing as mannequins. A fitting way to describe this collection, as quoted by Sorbier, was Alice in Wonderland. His classic couture, inspired by Manet's Picnic, saw this catwalk show take part in three scenes. The first, a summer scene in the park with real trees and models picnicking in the center, while the second took on more of a tribal look, with huge afro-haired models in animal print and jungle-colored strapless dresses and full-skirted or clingy and halter necked, all influenced by a famous boating expedition. The third section of outfits was a flash of bright coloured dresses in bold graphic prints, with the finale showing the traditional but slightly modified wedding dress in white lace with a mini tutu style skirt and a lace veil. And looking on from the audience was Sorbier's muse, French actress Julie Depardieu. Mid-2008, he added a new twist to the traditional medium of haute couture by launching his collection online. Instead of sending models wearing his designs down a catwalk, Sorbier opted to create a virtual collection, which took the form of a 3D reworking of his 25 sketches based on 25 dynamic and innovative women that comprised his autumn-winter 2008-2009 collection. He is well known for his workmanship, love of luxurious fabrics and clean-cut lines, and has a reputation for injecting humor in his collections while simultaneously upholding notions of romance and femininity. Known for his refined details and quest for perfection, Frank Sorbier has said that haute couture is his true love and passion. Creating haute couture clothing that women can actually wear, Lebanese designer George Chakra has established a reputation designing bold and stunning outfits for the wealthy. With a love for fashion, Chakra originally studied for two years in interior design, but eventually went back to what he loved, drawing and designing. He moved to Canada where he studied at the Canadian Fashion Academy, gaining a degree in fashion design, eventually to establish his own label in the mid-1980s. And what began as a small business eventually turned into an international haute couture fashion house. With inspirations such as the legendary designers like Yves Saint Laurent and Valentino, Chakra opened a couture house in Beirut at the age of 22 and has now been staging shows there for many years. He is also now a regular guest at Paris Haute Couture Fashion Week. By the mid-2000s, Chakra was firmly established among the fashion elite, showing his haute couture collection in Paris for the fourth year running, showing bright colors and embroidered details on a selection of designs that emphasize tight corsets with free-flowing skirts. 
He is known for mixing Eastern and Western influences and making sparkling embroidery the main focus of some of his collections, but with feminine sensuality as the central theme. Fresh pastels, 60s nostalgia and 70s glamour has also filled his catwalk with hemlines in a variety of lengths, flaring out from the waist, from below empire line busts or sometimes straight out from the neck. Tiered dresses also came in different lengths, including sweeping evening gowns ready for the red carpet. He has designed evening dresses that even he describes as techno glamour, with colours of electric blue and deep bottle green, boasting long sweeping trains, but kept some key elements of his past collections with touches of tulle here and there. He lit the Paris catwalk with an explosion of colours for a recent summer collection, with butterfly shapes and feathers in a continuing theme to the show, emerging from sleeves, lacing necklines and braiding dresses. Ball gowns were hand-painted in Italy with giant flowers. Appearing in fluorescent pinks and bright yellows, dresses also came in neutrals, cream and ivory, sprinkled with glimmering crystals and feather trims. Having designed for the wealthy Middle Eastern socialites, Chakra is now gathering an influential following in the USA, particularly Hollywood, where his designs are adorned by major stars at the major events. Oscar winner Helen Mirren wore one of his gowns to the Academy Awards, while Desperate Housewife Marsha Cross wore a simple but elegant pale pink George Chakra gown to the 2007 Emmy Awards. Queen Latifah was also front and center when the Lebanese fashion designer presented his whimsical haute couture collection at Paris Fashion Week in early 2009, having become a fan after wearing a Chakra gown to the 35th Annual People's Choice Awards. And I just felt beautiful in it. it. You know, usually things don't come to me as uh, close to my body fit as that was, but they really nailed it, and it was gorgeous, and, you know, I, I really felt good wearing it. She was equally wowed by his spring-summer 2009 collection, which saw a rainbow of colors parade down the runway. Oscar winner Forrest Whitaker and his wife, former actress and model Keisha Whitaker, have taken in Chakra's couture shows, and it seems Keisha has discovered the perks of Chakra's designs. All the sequins and the beading. It was, it was honestly one of the most beautiful dresses I'd ever seen. After discovering the designer, she now has him on hand to make sure she's suitably sparkling for all occasions and turns to him when she needs a red carpet fashion fix. But he also benefits from the exposure, claiming that Keisha is actually doing him a favor by wearing his designs. With outfits devoted to the modern-day woman who displays independence and oozes sex appeal, George Chakra, with his flawless creations, is a perfectionist. But that's what's made Hollywood come calling. Having dressed the Middle East high society for some years, he now has a growing clientele amongst the film world's A-list.